Hey, boys and girls, if you really want to learn all about the equipment on a fire engine, you just have to watch Firefighter George and Fire Engines, Volumes 1 and 2. I will show you how every piece of equipment is used in real, live action. And if you love trains like I do, then Firefighter George and Steam Trains and Firefighter George and Today's Mighty Trains will teach you how these mighty engines work. I will show you how the coal burns to make the trains go and how the circus animals ride on the trains. And if you love airplanes, then you just have to watch Firefighter George and Amazing Airplanes where we get in the cockpit of an F-15 fighter jet. Learn plane safety, learn how planes fly, and salute the Blue Angels. Start Smarter videos teach you how to enjoy these big machines safely. This video has two lessons. Let's start lesson one. Hey boys and girls, I'm Firefighter George. Boy, oh boy, do I have an exciting day planned for you today. We're gonna learn all about amazing airplanes. First, we're gonna meet with Pilot Sean, and he's gonna teach us all about his plane, how he makes it go up and down, and how he makes it turn and do crazy things in the sky. We're also gonna meet with a pilot from the Air Force with his F-15 fighter jet. We're gonna meet with the Navy and their Blue Angels and their F-18 Hornet. We're gonna learn all about a helicopter and what makes it go up and down. We're gonna to go to Delta Airlines and learn all about their commercial jets. But most importantly, we're gonna meet with Flight Attendant Tanja, who's gonna teach us how to stay safe. Now, y'all ready to get started? Yeah! Come on! and girls, this is Sean Tucker. He's an air show pilot. They also call him a sky dancer because he can do amazing things with this airplane. Sean's going to tell us all about his plane and how it works. You know what's so neat about airplanes is they fly in the sky and, and people ask, well, how do airplanes fly? Well, the first thing you need is a propeller. Oh. Once we fire this propeller up, it starts going through the air and it starts creating lift and it starts pulling the airplane through the air and it goes faster and faster and faster. As it goes faster, the little air molecules hit the wing here and they separate. One goes up, one goes down and it creates a high pressure and a low pressure and that's what creates lift. Great. And that's how we fly. It's, a, it's such a simple formula. It's just unbelievable. So once you're in the air, you got to figure out how to turn, you have to figure out how to go up, and you have to get, figure out how to go down. So follow me around and I'll show you what these are. Come on, boys and girls. These are called ailerons. And this is what deflects the air so I can bank the airplane this way or I can bank the airplane that way. And they just, I have a stick inside there and I go left or I go right. So come on back here. And now that we can bank the airplane, we also have to go up and we have to go down. So we go to the elevator that's attached to the same stick and it deflects the air. And it, I pull back on the stick and I go up push forward on the stick and I go down. That's great. Now what we also have, this is kind of complicated, but this is called the rudder and it also deflects the air. But the reason you need the rudder is because 
when the airplane banks like this with the ailerons, one wing has more lift than the other, and it causes it, the nose to go like this. And so it gets uncomfortable. So to fix that, you put in a little rudder for the turn, and then you can have a nice coordinated turn, and it makes it nice and smooth. Great. What's in the cockpit? How does that work? Come on in, and I'll show you. Okay, this is the stick that controls the ailerons. If you look out over on the wing, you can see the ailerons. And then this is the stick that controls the elevator. So if I want to go up, I pull back. If I want to turn right, I just take the stick to the right. Or if I want to go left, then here's your throttle right here. That's your, we don't have a gas pedal like a car. That's full throttle, full gas, go fast. All want to right. go slow, just go back on the throttle. The rudder pedals are down here. Okay, if you can watch the rudder pedals work, that's how it makes the nose go back and forth. That's great. Okay, gauges. That's the cool thing about the airplane, is all these gauges. These gauges are tell me what my engine's doing, and these gauges tell me, this is the airspeed that tells me how fast I'm going, and this is the altimeter that tells me how high I am above the ground. Pretty cool stuff. That's awesome. What is this right here? That's for protection. This is a, a helmet that I fly with. If I ever have a problem and I had to make a crash landing or something, it protects my head against from hitting it against the side of the, the, the panels there. That is amazing. Now, Sean, how do you stay safe? What do you do to make sure your plane is safe and that you're safe? Well, number one, you got to make sure your equipment's safe. In this airplane, I have two of the best mechanics working on it all the time, and they look after the airplane like they're the doctors of my airplane. They're always looking to make sure nothing's broken. Then for me, I have to be very responsible. I have to be very mature, knowing my own personal limitations. Right. And so um, I'm always training. I'm always practicing to, to see how far I can push the aerobatic envelope and do it safely. And so I, I practice twice, sometimes three times a day. And it's, it's very, very important. This is because it is dangerous work. You have to be very responsible and very mature. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Sean. We appreciate it. Boys and girls, let's go learn about another plane. Come on. OK, boys and girls, let's watch pilot Sean take off. He is going to show us the amazing tricks he can do with his airplane. When he is up high in the sky, he can turn his plane back down to the ground and spin it around and around as it drops. Then, he pulls back on the stick, making the plane go straight. And he can push it to the left to make the plane turn upside down and then right side up again. And by pushing it from side to side, the plane will spin in the air again. How many times did you see Pilot Sean spin all the way around? Whoa! Did you see that? Pilot Sean just turned his plane all the way around. That's amazing! Can you see Pilot Sean moving the stick in the cockpit to make the plane turn right and left? Pilot Sean can make smoke come out of a little machine attached to the bottom of his airplane by turning on a switch in his cockpit. Doesn't the smoke look cool? By moving the stick right or left, the plane will flip around and around again. Whoa, upside down again. Look at those spins. This is amazing. Pilot Sean practices every day to make sure he stays safe. Just like you do your homework from school to stay smart. Thanks, Pilot Sean. Okay, boys and girls, how many of you have flown on an airplane before? Me! Oh, did you have fun? Yes! Yeah! Firefighter George loves to fly in an airplane. You get to go way, way high up in the sky and look down at the cities down below. 
But you know why I love flying the most? Because it's so safe. Who knows why it's so safe to fly in an airplane? Danielle? Because the flight attendants and the pilots have to train for us every year to keep us safe. That's right. The pilots and the flight attendants go through hours and hours of training every year to make sure they keep the plane safe for us. Now let's go inside and meet Flight Attendant Tanja, and she's going to tell us how we stay safe. Come on. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Who's ready for Disney World? Me. Right, before the airplane takes off this morning, boys and girl, we, girls, we're going to go over some of our safety information, okay? Number one being what? Our seatbelt. Let's talk about how to actually buckle that seatbelt. This is my little pretend seatbelt. It's just a demo, but it's going to show you how to buckle yours. We're going to take this flat metal piece, and we're going to insert it into the belt buckle. Did you hear it click? Now, everybody's not the same size, so guess what? We're going to probably have to tighten it on some of you, okay? But if you'll just pull on this strap right here, it'll tighten right around your waist so that you'll stay safe and that you're not bouncing around in your seat. Okay? Everybody oh. got that? Yeah. If you need to, for some reason, get up, say perhaps go to the laboratory or to the bathroom, guess what? You can release it. We're going to need you to just lift up on this flat piece and out of the fall. How about that? Let's talk about our... Oxygen. If for some reason your oxygen mask happens to fall from this little panel above your heads, guess what? It's going to fall right into your face. You see that? What do I want you to do? Grab it. I want you to reach up. I want you to grab that mask and place it over your what? Nose, nose and mouth. Yeah. Your nose and mouth. How are you going to hold it on there? You have an elastic, elastic band. band. There you go. Secure it around your face and it holds your mask in place. If for some reason you miss my information that I'm sharing with you and you're not real sure about the other information I've shared with you thus far, you can read it for yourselves. There's a passenger information card located in all of our seat pockets so that you can read through that information and find out more about your safety. What if we need to evacuate the aircraft? How are we going to know which exits to take? We're going to look around us. We're going to see where the closest exit might be. Oh, it's this one. You have a window there. You have a door here. Guess it's what? Not. There's another door here. So when you're listening to your safety demo from your flight attendants on board the aircraft, I want you to really listen closely and look around so that you'll know where your safest exit might be. Okay? Now, what if for some reason we had smoke on board the aircraft? What if we can't see how to get out of the aircraft? Should I stand up to get through that smoke? No. no. Should I lie down on the floor to get through that smoke? No. no. Why don't we get down to armrest level? That's where your safest air is going to be if you're ever in smoke, boys and girls. I don't really want you down on the floor, but if you could just make sure your head is right where the armrest is on the aircraft. Show me the armrest. Who can touch the armrest? There it is. You're going to be right at armrest level so that you can breathe some safe air, okay? Now, you're trying to exit the aircraft or you're trying to leave the aircraft. How do you know which way to go? It's so much smoke. The little lights. The track lighting the that's lights. on the floor. The white lights are going to lead you to some red lights, and the red lights will indicate, guess what? You're now at an exit, and we can leave the aircraft. Okay, good. Okay, boys and girls, now we get to see the Air Force's jet plane. That big plane behind me is the F-15. F stands for fighter plane. Now, we're going to talk to the crew maintenance chief that keeps the plane safe and the pilot and get up in the cockpit. Come on. Okay, boys and girls, this is Sergeant Manning. He's superintendent of the F-15 flight demo team. 
He's in charge of all of these planes and he makes sure they stay safe so the pilots can get in and fly them safely. He's going to tell us about what he does to make sure these planes stay safe every day. Okay, boys and girls, to make sure the airplanes stay safe, I inspect the panels to make sure that the panels are secure. I check to make sure that the tires are properly serviced and they're ready to go. I also check the engines to make sure the engines are serviceable and full of oil and uh, properly maintained for the pilot to take flight. We also take, we take, we inspect the wings to make sure that the wings are serviceable. Uh, there's no loose or missing objects on them. As you can see, we have uh, rear tires, and we also have to check these and make sure that they're serviceable. What you see here are streamers. We make sure that the streamers are, it says, removed before flight. So as a ground maintenance person, I have to remove this streamer before flight so the pilot can uh, properly uh, retract the landing gear. Come on down here, boys and girls. This is your uh, flight, con flight control service, and it moves in the air so that the plane will go up and down. My job on the ground is when he, when he comes back from flight to check this for, to make sure that it's still serviceable, there's no uh, dent, scratches, or maybe something hit it in the air. We have to check it and make sure everything's good to go. Let's take a look at the exhaust of this engine. Come look at the exhaust, boys and girls. Look at this. This engine has thousands and thousands of moving parts. So my job is to make sure that all the moving parts are working properly so that I won't endanger the life of the pilot while he's flying. This is the tail hook of the aircraft. This is what the pilot will use in the event that uh, his brakes failed. He will drop the tail hook and it will catch a cable and it will slow him down so that he would be able to stop in the event of an emergency. Do they also use that in aircraft carriers? The Navy uses it uh, every time they land. Uh, the Air Force only uses it for emergency uh, because we don't have such a severe landing as right. the Navy does on the carrier. Excellent. Let's watch the Air Force's F-15 fly through the air. Okay, boys and girls, now we're going to talk to Lieutenant Ray. He's a pilot for the United States Air Force. He's going to show us everything up in his cab. Come on. Okay, Lieutenant Ray, tell us about the controls in your F-15 fighter jet. Well, right here you have the uh, control stick. Basically, this acts as your steering wheel, just like you're in a car. Go left to turn left and right to turn right. Pretty basic. You got on the left side here, underneath, there are the throttles, and that's basically uh, the same as a gas pedal in the car. You can, you can go all the way forward to uh, put the pedal to the floor and all the way back to uh, try and slow down. And what if you have to get out of the plane real fast? What do you do? Well, in the case of emergency, we have uh, several different options. Uh, if you have to leave the plane for any reason, uh, it's not pliable, you're in trouble, you can always eject, which uh, there's ejection handles right here, uh, which has uh, been used and is safe as an effective way to get out of the plane in an emergency. And then how do you lower and raise the cockpit? Uh, basically, you put the top down just by uh, using the lever here on the right side. Just forward, puts it down, and back brings it up. Those sure are a lot of controls on your dashboard. How did you learn how to use all of those? They teach you everything, uh, one at a time, right? real basic. It takes uh, over two years to do all the training and uh, so that by the time you're done, you, you know the plane inside out. Thanks, Lieutenant Ray. Let's get down, boys and girls, and watch Lieutenant Ray take off. First, Lieutenant Ray starts his engine and makes sure everything is working safely. His crew on the ground prepares his jet for takeoff and removes the wheel chock so the big jet can roll forward. After all of their safety checks, the crew tells Lieutenant Ray he is ready for takeoff. So Lieutenant Ray moves the throttle forward, making his big jet roll. Do you see the yellow line on the ground? This line will lead Lieutenant Ray to the runway. Let's all tap the sky for good luck for Lieutenant Ray. Whoa, look at those big jet exhausts of this amazing F-15 fighter jet. Up, 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 into the sky, Lieutenant Ray goes. Can you 
see the orange heat in the exhaust of the F-15? Whoa, he is really flying fast now. Now, Lieutenant Ray has pulled back on his control stick, making his F-15 fly straight up into the sky. Look at all those flips! Now Lieutenant Ray is waiting to all us on the ground with his airplane. Can you tell which plane is the F-15? Thanks, Lieutenant Ray! All right, y'all, this is our door. Guess what? It's over here in the arm. Does that mean it's ready for any emergency? If I open this door with an arm like this, a slide's gonna pop out for you to slide down. How about that? Okay. Okay, so the door looks like it's ready. When we open the door and that slide's ready for us to jump on, I want you to have your arms straight out front, and I want you to jump and slide, okay? Okay. You have your shoes off so that we won't put a hole in what? The slide. The slide. We don't want to puncture that slide at all, okay? All right. We're going to open the door in the direction of the arrow. See the arrow? Okay. All right. Firefighter George is going to jump first with my arms out. Jump and slide. Arms out front. Remember, children, when you jump, have your shoes off. Keep your arm out straight in front of you. And try to go straight down the slide. That shoes off. Arms out front. Slide straight. Thanks, Tanja. Let's start lesson two now for older junior pilots. Hey, boys and girls. Today we're at Delta Airlines. We're going to learn all about the big commercial jets that they fly, maybe from Atlanta to Chicago or maybe New York to California. Pilot Bambi's going to tell us all about the outside of the plane and what goes on in the cockpit. Let's listen. Hi, guys. I'm a first officer on Delta Airplane, and something very similar to this. This is a Boeing 767. At the moment, we're right in the front where the nose is. The very tip is what we call the nose. And as we come over here, you can see we're standing right by the nose wheel landing gear. We've got two big tires, even bigger than most cars. And then we've got lights to shine the way as we come in for landing. And what happens is this gear goes all the way up in the nose and disappears once we're in flight. Comes back down again for landing. So it is movable. Cool. As we come over here, I got lots to show you. Anybody know what this is? Oh, I know what it is. It's the place where they keep the luggage. That's right. All your baggage gets stored right on board, right over here. As we come over here, we've got some landing lights. We've got the big, does anyone know what this is? The big engine. That's right. Show them how big it is. That's right. That's how big it is. And this is what supplies the power so that we can maintain flight. How fast does it go, Bambi? Really fast. I'm thinking somewhere around 600 miles an hour. Wow, 600 miles an hour. And we come look right here. We've got the exhaust part of the big engine. Does anybody know what this is? Yeah, I know. Um, the main landing gear. That's right. We have four tires. The main landing gear actually will tuck all the way into the body of the airplane on takeoff and comes right back down again for landing. Now, Bambi, on these big planes, where do they keep the fuel? Does anybody know? Okay, well, they're stored right in the, in the wings themselves and in part of the belly. Inside the wing? In the wing. How cool. Well, let's go look at the engine, boys and girls. Come on. Hey, guys, we're in front of an open engine at the moment. What you can see right here are the fan blades. These things turn and turn. They go really, really fast. They go fast enough eventually to get us flying. But then I'll show you the rest of it. 
cool. Over here we have the inside of the engine you can see. Because we're in the maintenance hangar, we have a special treat. We get to see an engine that's being worked on. I mean, look at the whole back came off, boys and girls. That's the casing where the engine actually is held up onto the wing. Very important. Cool. Look, boys and girls, the airplane tug is pushing the big jet away from the gate so we can take off. Well, Jake, we're up in the cockpit. This is where we do all the work. Right here, we've got the main place where we sit. I sit here in the co-pilot seat, captain seat's over there. And in front of us, we got a lot of things that we do so that we fly safely. For instance, right here, we've got the yoke. This is how we steer. Pull up, pull back, right and left, sort of like a car, except we get to go up. And then over here, we've got something we call the throttle. This is what gives power to those big old engines that you were showing me downstairs. We've got lots of instruments here to tell us that everything is working properly, and it helps us fly. Sort of looks like a video game up there, but it isn't. Anyway, we've got all kinds of uh, information that we need to use to fly, and uh, let's see, what else can I show you? We've got uh, landing gear. Looks like a wheel. When you pull it up, the gear goes up. When you put it down, the gear comes down. And that's pretty much all I can think of around here to show you. Lights. The lights. Uh, we've got all kinds of instrumentation to let us know if everything is working just the way it's supposed to. And if it doesn't, we've got lots of checklists to take care of it. Kids want to go for a plate? Come on, let's go. Look, boys and girls, our big Delta jet is taking off high into the sky. Up, up, right into the sky right we go. Right Whoa, look how high we are. Pilot Bambi is at the controls, making sure we stay safe. Get ready, boys and girls. We are going to turn to the right. Make sure you always keep your seatbelt on when flying, as you never know when the plane might turn or run into air bumps in the sky called turbulence. Now Pilot Bambi is getting ready for our landing. Touchdown and we are home again. All right, boys and girls, this is what's called a remotely stored raft. They are packed away in the ceiling of the airplane above your seats. It's an extra raft for emergencies. It's made for 46 people, but if needed, up to 72 people can climb into this raft safely. Okay, you all, we're gonna give instructions on how to actually put your life vest on. This is the front of your life vest. Here's the back of your life vest. And you know the back because it's a single flat piece with all of your straps hanging from it, okay? So that's the back of it. We're gonna put it on by placing it over our head. Here are my flaps in front, it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna turn to the back and you can see I have two straps on each side with my single piece in the middle. I'm gonna take these clips that I have on each side and connect them to the ring in the front. See, it'll just snap right on. Now, see my nice belt? If for some reason it was too loose, I could take these straps and tighten it so that it's tight around my waist, okay? In order to inflate my vest once I'm exiting the aircraft or leaving the aircraft to enter the raft, I'm gonna jerk on these two pieces right here. This little tab and this little tab will let me inflate my vest. Now, what if for some reason it didn't inflate? I have a backup. Do you think I have a backup? I have a backup. I can always use these red tubes on each side of my life vest. If I blow into them, they'll inflate my vest for me. All right, I think we're ready to enter the raft. Let's go. 
Okay, everybody's ready. Everybody have their life vest on? Yeah. yeah. All right, you have your shoes off? Yeah. All right. Are we going to stay seated when we get in there? Yes, yes ma'am. Are we going to ever stand up in the raft? No. No, we want to always stay seated. Don't stand up, okay? All right. We're going to start inflating these vests. When do we inflate the vest, Tonja? We're going to show you right now. If you'll get up and come over come to the on. door. Don't forget, boys and girls, we put the life vest on over our head. Then we find the straps on the back and bring each one around our waist, one on the left and one on the right. We can then connect both straps with their clips to the ring in the front. And don't forget to take your shoes off before you leave your seat. We always wait to pull down on the red tabs to inflate our vest until we are ready to get into the life raft. Remember, life vest over your head. Connect the back straps to the front. Take your shoes off. And pull down on the red tabs as you step into the life raft. Put air into your life vest. Let's all stay seated so we don't put a hole in the raft. Okay, boys and girls, now some planes don't carry life vests. What do we do? Seat cushions. This is another means of flotation on the aircraft. Cool. If you'll pull your seat cushion up from the seat, place it towards your chest. On the underside, you have straps. Place your arms through the straps. Grasp your wrist. Rest your chin on your seat cushion. Jump in the water. This is your means of flotation. It's an automatic result. Let's try. Boys and girls, I'm floating. Totally safe. Look, boys and girls, here come the Navy's Blue Angels. Let's watch them take off. See the landing gear going up into their jet? Whoa, he's going straight up into the sky! These pilots can fly to each other. These pilots are specially trained to fly their airplanes. They fly the FA-18 Hornet. The FA tells us that this is both a fighter and an attack jet. Remember, the Air Force has the F-15. That's just a fighter jet, as it only has an F in front of its name. Watch how close these two planes pass each other. Whoa! Very cool. Look at this pilot spinning his airplane. Planes can go almost 1,400 miles per hour. They painted their planes blue and gold because blue and gold are the official colors of the United States Navy.
in for a landing. After each show, they park their planes on the runway and all march out together. Okay, everyone, let's stand up and salute the Blue Angel pilots. Ready? Salute! All right! Okay, boys and girls, now we're with the Army. This is retired Major Lisa Bailey, and she's a helicopter pilot. She's going to tell us all about the helicopters and what makes them different from airplanes and how they work. But most importantly, how Lisa stays safe. Okay, here is our UH-1 helicopter. A UH is a utility helicopter. That means it can do lots of different things like carrying soldiers or acting as a medical evacuation helicopter to keep everybody safe on the ground. And the way that it's different from an airplane is this big rotor blade that you see on the top of this aircraft rather than staying fixed like an airplane, they're called fixed wing, turns. And that's a rotary wing. So Great. it creates its own lift. And as it goes, the aircraft can actually lift up. Excellent. What's in the back of the, uh, the helicopter? In the back of the helicopter, we have a tail rotor. We have the main rotor and the tail rotor. The tail rotor keeps the helicopter streamlined in flight. So it keeps it straight. It keeps it straight. Excellent. Now what do you do each day to make sure your helicopter is safe? The first thing that we do is what's called a pre-flight inspection. We have a book that tells us everything that's supposed to be right with this helicopter. So it's like doing your homework, but you do it every single day. Every single day. And after you're done flying too. Afterwards, so make sure it's safe for the next flight. Absolutely. Well, let's jump in the cockpit, boys and girls, and see how it looks inside. Come on. Come on, boys and girls. Okay, Lisa, how does it work? Okay, the way that it works are these are called flight controls. This control is called the collective control. And you lift it up and push it down, and when you lift it up, it makes the rotor blades get more bite into the air and give you more power. This is called the cyclic control. This controls the direction of the helicopter in flight. These pedals that I use with my feet control the tail rotor, and that's how the flight controls work. Excellent. Now, what, what, what important gauges do you have here? Well, these gauges are very important to keep you safe. This gauge tells you how fast you're going. This gauge tells you how high you are. This gauge tells you what direction you are going. And this gauge tells you the rate at which you are climbing or descending. So it's very important that we maintain control of the aircraft by reading and interpreting these gauges. Excellent. Now I see you have a helmet. What is the helmet for? The helmet is so that we can hear the radios while we are talking to the maybe the troops on the ground or talking to each other or talking to the air traffic controllers because if you don't have the helmet on, you can't hear with the, all the noise that the uh, helicopter makes by itself. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Now, boys and girls, we're going to watch Lisa take off and fly in the air. Come on, let's go. Okay, boys and girls, now I need you to pay very close attention to this. This is Crew Chief Carey. He's in charge of the maintenance on these helicopters, but he also teaches boys and girls how to stay safe. I want you to listen to his safety lessons. Now, boys and girls, the first thing you have to worry about is the tail rotor. That is the most dangerous part of the helicopter. Now, helicopters are very fun, a lot of fun, and they're very interesting to be around, but they also can be very dangerous. The tail rotor is the most dangerous part of the helicopter because if you come around to the helicopter from that side, the pilot who's up front can't see you. And that's a dangerous, very, it's like being in a fan. It's a very dangerous thing to be around. The next apparatus that is very dangerous is the main rotor. The main rotor, although it turns around in a circle, it does have a tendency to dip down. If you don't, if you don't stay low, 
entering the helicopter or leaving the helicopter, you might just get hit with it. So you gotta be very careful. Outside of that, helicopters are a lot of fun, and I hope one day you'll get a chance to fly with Lisa or myself. Okay, boys and girls, so to stay safe on the helicopters, first off, we never go near them without an adult. Your parents or your grandparents or another person like Firefighter George or Crew Chief Kerry. Number two, we never get near the back of the helicopter. The pilot can't see you back here. Now let's go watch the big helicopters take off. Come on. Now let's watch these big helicopters start their engines and take off. The UH-1 is taking off. The UH stands for Utility Helicopter. It is also called a Huey Helicopter. That's the AH-1 Cobra Helicopter. The AH stands for Attack Helicopter. And this is the OH-6. The OH stands for Observation Helicopter. There's the Cobra attack helicopter high in the sky. And there goes the Huey helicopter. See how quick the light observation helicopter is? Start Smarter Sincerest Appreciation to Delta Airlines Team Oracle The United States Air Force The United States Army And the Navy's Blue Angels